This morning we are continuing in our celebration of Easter, but if Easter season was a bell curve, we would be over the top of the bell curve and heading down in the other direction. Because, just like Lent on the fourth Sunday of Lent, we begin with our celebration of the Laetare, where we wear the rose vestments, uh, and things start to head quickly into Easter, so too for Easter season, we have gone past the halfway point, and we are now heading quickly towards the completion of Easter time with the ascension of Jesus on May 29th, again a Thursday, and then followed 10 days later, after that day, with the coming of the Holy Ghost, known as Pentecost. They are two unique seasons that have been kind of blended together, but the church says that we should be still celebrating the resurrection, and having gone over the top of that hump and heading now towards the end of the season, we are now looking not just backwards at the resurrection, but forward at the coming events of the church calendar, Jesus' ascension, and of course, the coming of the Holy Ghost. In fact, next week we will have in your bulletins an insert for something called a novena. And we will pray a novena, a nine-day set of prayers, for the intentions of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We will ask you to take that home. There are two uh, colleagues, two set prayers. Uh, and then for each day of those nine days, we will be like the disciples. It says in the Bible, after Jesus ascended into heaven, the disciples spent the next nine days in prayer, awaiting the coming of the Holy Ghost. So we too will actively participate in that novena of prayer in preparation for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Last week we began our journey towards the end of this season when we talked a little bit about Jesus going away. When he tells his disciples, I am going to go away and then I've come and I'm going to go away and you will have sorrow and then you will have joy. And we talked last week in the sermon about the reality that even though Jesus' going from us has changed that physical presence, especially for the disciples, that physical presence has changed. <clears throat> in fact, Jesus is more present with us now than he could be in that earthly ministry when he was in human flesh, walking around the earth as a human being, and yet still God. Even though, of course, he proved to us through his miracles that the laws of physics did not apply to him. After all, walking on water breaks the laws of physics. We do know from the example in Scripture that Jesus was in one place at one time. After his ascension, of course, he can be in all places and at all times, forward and backwards, in all of our lives. But he is more present to us as well. Even if we don't sense his presence through the words of scripture, through the gathering together of his faithful people, even if it's just a smaller portion of us today. And, of course, in the presence of the sac that he's present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. That assurance of grace, that promise to us that this is his body and this is his blood. Even if we, with our human minds can't fully comprehend how that happens. But we're going to do something really radical. No, I'm not going to talk about superfluidity of naughtiness. I know that's what you're asking. Right? What in the world is the superfluidity of naughtiness? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to look that up elsewhere. It means a lot of naughtiness. And I always, every time I hear that, whereas when, when, Paul, when the James says we're to put away the superfluidity of naughtiness, I, my first thought when I first read that was, well, does that mean I can have just regular naughtiness? It doesn't work that way either. No, where we're going to get radical is that we aren't going to contain speaking about the Holy Spirit to one day a year on Pentecost Sunday. Right? For most of Episcopalians, God the Holy Spirit is scary. After all, he, he may make us happy. He may make us exuberant. He may convict us of sin. He may actually make us excited, and that's not very Episcopalian. But today's Gospel lesson prepares us for this reality that Jesus is going to send the third person of the Holy Trinity to be with us. 
He begins that gospel lesson by saying, look, I've told you I'm going away, and none of you ask where. You're just sad about it. But it's good news. Because when I go away, I will send this comforter. I will send the Holy Spirit, and He will lead you into all truth. That which we cannot understand with our human minds can begin to be comprehended by the power of the Holy Spirit. That the third person of the Trinity, He is able to come into us and He dwells within us by virtue of our baptism. We are born again of water and the Holy Spirit at the font of baptism. And because of that gift of the Holy Ghost, we are able to understand more clearly how it is God would have us live our lives. The church as well as us individually, are able to be able to see how it is that God is active and at work in this church. Now, don't get me wrong. When we say He's going to lead us into all truth, I don't want you to start thinking that there's some sort of a secret truth. We know that's not true. That's a heresy called Gnosticism. And He's also not going to contradict the truth that has been revealed to us in Scripture. After all, it is God the Holy Spirit Himself who has guided and governed the church in compiling the scriptures for us. He's not going to contradict Himself, nor is He going to contradict Jesus or the Father. But He's going to help us to more fully understand not only the truth about God, but how that truth, that objective truth, can affect us, can change us, can lead us, correct us, and guide us. And those are all things that we need as members of the body of Christ. Jesus says that what I am saying to you is from the Father. And what the Spirit will say to you will be my words as well. A couple of weeks, though, Jehovah's Witnesses are having a big national convention at Ford Field. And we should have this text available to all of them. They're good at knocking on our doors. What if the Episcopalians knock on their doors and talk them about the Trinity? How great would that be? Don't worry, I'll have some things on the sign when this is start. But God the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity, has been given to us that we may accomplish one amazing, remarkable thing. God the Holy Ghost has been given to us that we might become holy. The same word as saint, sanctus, it means holiness. Left to our own devices, remember back in Lent we talked about all those sins? Left our own devices, that's who we are. But by grace, by the indwelling of God the Holy Ghost, and by our cooperation with His promptings, His leading, His teaching, in all of that, we can begin to make headway individually and corporately to be holy. And that's what the cross was for. That's what the empty tomb is about. It's not just the wow factor. Jesus died on that cross for our sins. He conquered sin and death. That we may have life. That we may be united to the Father through Him. And that we may be empowered for ministry and led into holiness by the third person of the Trinity Himself. God, the Holy Spirit. Next week, you'll have that novena in your hand. And you'll be reminded of those gifts of the Holy Spirit. And every one of them, in various measures, He sees fit, is available to us. We can manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not so that we can personally be important, not that we could personally be super duper and looked at as wow. 
of effort if you're doing it right. You won't want that. But what we will want when we cooperate with Him is that we will begin to see how He is at work in our lives so that we can show forth those same gifts and become the saints He desires us to be. I will send to you the Comforter, Jesus promises. The world will be convicted of sin. And so it is. The evil one of this world has been judged. And so he is. The brothers and sisters in Christ, by grace, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we are seen. We are His. We are forgiven. Day by day, moment by moment, we are becoming saints. If we are His, and we attempt to cooperate with Him, the Holy Ghost will come and lead you into all truth. And so he has. May we seek after the truth of God in Jesus Christ and live it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.